It's crunch time here in the 2024-25 MLS regular season. With just five games left to play, we find ourselves on the outside of the playoff picture looking in at 7th place Montreal and we have a tough slate of fixtures to round out the regular season. Starting with highlights of our away fixture against Charlotte will then be simming this game against Nashville and as we move into the final month of the regular season October we'll be playing a game against Houston Dynamo in full that will be the featured game of the episode before we round things out with the game simulated against DC United and then highlights of our final regular season fixture against Messi and into Miami and at this point of the season with fixtures coming thick and fast Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has some real selection issues on his hands so Tyler Dean, Duan Jones and Luciano Rodriguez remain from our strongest starting 11 but the other eight players are all either backups or youngsters and Charlotte don't really have anything to play for at this stage of the season so I wasn't expecting a particularly tough test but it was actually a pretty tense and cagey affair we certainly had the better of the first half though forcing the Charlotte goalkeeper into a number of saves just seconds after parrying away Bulmer's shot he made another point blank save from a header Dave Romney it was turning the ball towards the goal and although Charlotte made it to half time with the scores still level Luciano Rodriguez opened the scoring in the second half it took until the 70th minute for us to create a, a really true clear opportunity Rodriguez no, made no mistake in taking it and that was how the game ended very very few opportunities in the second half and we held Charlotte at bay pretty much for 90 minutes so we do get off to the start that we were looking for in the final episode of the regular season adding three points to the board that could prove to be invaluable however in spite of the promising result the board obviously didn't think it was a promising enough performance and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's position at the club he is informed is currently under close observation so it seems as though the players will have the manager's job on their mind as well as the playoffs as they head into the next matchup against Nashville. Solskjaer however isn't hampered by the same selection problems as he was in the opening game of the episode so it is a full strength 11 and it is another narrow one goal victory. Vrioni opened the scoring in the fifth minute before Lovitz equalized just four minutes later. Just five minutes from time though Vrioni comes up with an all-important winner. Back-to-back -back victories were exactly what we needed as we do climb back up into the playoff places. Just a point ahead of 8th place Montreal, however. So it's vitally important that we keep that momentum going into the featured game of the episode against Houston Dynamo. Again, Solskjaer has his strongest 11 available. The only change for today's game, Carlos Hill moving out to the right-hand side to allow Zukovsky to come into the center of midfield so without further ado let's head over to houston and see if we can take one step closer to securing that season one playoff berth so we are up in the commentary box for one final time here in the 2024-25 mls season the season has flown by. We are already in October. Fighting for a place in the playoffs. Which Carles Hill, the New England captain, is looking to secure here. Along with Thomas Chunkalai. It is just going to be one season here in this New England Revolution career mode save. Whether we make the playoffs or not. It is looking... As Rodriguez puts the header over, completely uncontested from six yards out. Completely free header. All right, it was maybe a yard or two further outside than that. But that is a guilt edge chance early. Just three minutes into the game, Rodriguez has a golden opportunity to open the scoring. But as we have seen in the last couple of episodes, his finishing has not been... As clinical as you would hope. But again, we knew that when we signed him. We knew that was what we were signing up for. A player who had all the physical gifts that you could want out of a striker. Or out of a forward, really. He's not even a, a true striker. He's kind of, you know, this more modern forward, a Mo Salah. Great effort from Zukowski. 
a Mo Salah who can play through the middle, but who can play out wide as well with the, with the pace, with the dribbling ability. That's really close. That maybe even grazed the crossbar. But regardless, as I was saying, we will just do one season. It's very much looking like we will make the playoffs. So if that is the case, we will have one final episode to round the series out with however many playoff games we are privileged enough to feature in. But if we don't make the playoffs, that will be it. This will be the last episode. We currently are in a playoff position, but only by a point. So we could change that here by putting an extra three on the board. And depending what Montreal do, that could almost be enough to well and truly secure that playoff place. Gone with the 4-2-4 here today. We could have gone with the 4-2-3-1 to match Houston. As Rioni's shot is blocked, Rodriguez turns it towards goal. But as we have seen already, based on the way that we thought Houston would set up to play and the way that they have indeed set up to play, I thought the 4-2-4 would give us the attack and dominance and the pressure that would be needed and that is proving to be the case here in the opening 10 11 minutes or so a number of shots on goal that one from phil neumann forcing a save from the houston goalkeeper and carlos hill will put the corner in once more and it's fallen to frioni perhaps he could have just swung his right foot through that ball as it dropped but instead he tries to take a touch and that allowed the goalkeeper to come out and claim. But it is all New England here in the opening passages of the game. And look at the amount of space we have with Thomas Chonkalai in the wide area. And what a ball in that is. That is a sumptuous goal. That's one of the most satisfying goals I've scored this entire series. We've had some more spectacular goals than that. But this one particularly good because we chose the formation for this exact reason. We would have time and space in the wide areas. We would have time and space outside the Houston penalty area. And we dropped that ball with Thomas Chonkalai right onto the head of Giacomo Vrioni. Who I believe with his 19 goals in 25 matches may lead the MLS in scoring. He may not. I know Luis Suarez is right up there as well. And last time I checked, Luis Suarez was ahead of Giacomo Vrioni. But Vrioni has been on an absolute tear of late. And 19 goals in 25 games is outrageous. And that's not taken into consideration his assists either. Last time I checked, he did have a goal contribution per game. But it has been... Uh, an episode or two since then. So I'm not sure if that remains the case. But Houston trying to work their way back into this game. Getting their first real... Oh my days, and their level already. I really thought Tyler Dean was going to save that. It looks relatively comfortable for the young goalkeeper. Our first round selection at the very, very beginning of the series. The very first episode. And Phil Neumann's been beaten far too easily as well. Brandon Bay the same. But I mean, Brandon Bay is a fairly attack minded fullback. We don't necessarily expect him to excel defensively. Phil Neumann, though, we certainly do. We brought him in for that exact reason. And he's been letting us down in that regard in recent episodes. Brioni this time knocking the ball into the feet of Zukovsky, whose shot flies over the bar. But again, we are proving that we are going to be a test for Houston today. Another excellent attacking move. Thomas Schunkelai finding Giacomo Vrioni as he did for the goal. Vrioni this time turning his header to a New England teammate rather than towards goal. But it looks like that's going to prove to be just as dangerous. Fantastic switch of play from Leonard Maloney into the feet of Carlos Heel. Slightly different role for the captain today out on the right-hand side. 
He's going to have to cut in onto that left foot on occasions. And again, that's why we went with this particular system. Because we have seen Houston sitting off when we enter their final third. So Carlos Hill is going to have the time and space to cut inside and to get shots away on that left foot. Right now, though, most of our attacking success is coming down our left-hand side. Zukovsky in a nice little pocket of space. And a Zukovsky who gets another shot away. He's taken on the role of Carlos Hill at the moment. And he is taking on the, the role of Carlos Hill. Or taking on the role that, that, that Carlos Hill normally takes on in this particular formation. In that slightly more advanced centre midfield position. He is a versatile midfielder, Zukovsky. He does have that string to his bow. Chonkalai can't quite win the ball back. Rodriguez is going to drop in to try and press as well. And Houston completely circumnavigate our defences. Work their way into the box once more where Tyler D makes a fantastic save. It was a disappointing effort for the goal. But it's a very good effort to keep us level there. As Houston prepare to put in their first corner of the game, I believe. Brioni steals the ball away. Ken Rodriguez make a good enough run in behind. He can't. Neither can Brioni hold on to the ball. And Houston again. And come away on the counter-attack. Better defended by Brandon by. Carlos Hill dropping in to a more central position to defend as well. Can't win the ball back there though. Zukovsky comes over, as does Maloney. Brandon by one on one with the Houston winger though and does a much better job on that occasion than he did for the goal. Goes out for another Houston corner. Which Smith will deliver this time. Chonkalai at the near post heads away. Houston going to have an opportunity to recover though. And Dewan Jones this time heads away at the back post. Rodriguez just about clears. Only as far as another man in a Houston shirt. That's a good challenge. That's not such a good pass though from Kessler. Chonkalai. Can he beat his man one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, he can. And he finds, doesn't find Rodriguez. The pass looked as though it was going to find its target initially. But defended well by Houston. Excellent pressing from Zukovsky, though, who can't quite find Vrioni at the back post. Again, he was just going to try to nod that down to a New England teammate. But dealt with well by Houston. This game is starting to feel a bit more like the Charlotte game that opened the episode. The first 10, 15 minutes or so certainly didn't feel like that. But the last 20 minutes have. A bit more tight, a bit more cagey. Four in midfield a little bit more than in the final thirds. As we work the ball across the back line with... An opportunity to cross once more with Thomas Chonkalai, who finds Rioni, who nods it down to Zukovsky, who gets a third, maybe even a fourth strike away at goal. This one is parried wide, but I think it was going harmlessly into the side netting anyway. And not even the side netting, that was a, a good two yards wide. But the Houston goalkeeper felt like he needed to make sure. And he did make sure. The ball falls to Phil Neumann. He had a chance to make up. For his less than stellar effort when conceding the goal. But he couldn't turn it towards goal. Chonkalai spaced across on his left now. It's the weaker of his two feet. And you can tell. Because the cross sailed straight into the hands. Of the grateful goalkeeper. And with only... Five minutes plus stoppage time left remaining in the first half. Rodriguez is clearly suffering from an injury. Because ordinarily he would have blown by that Houston defender. 
But he has picked up a knock and it's clearly hampering his mobility somewhat. So we'll have to keep an eye on that into the second half. We really could use Rodriguez, who apparently has run off the injury already. So didn't hamper his mobility for very long. I was just about to say we could really use Rodriguez in this push for a playoff place and into the playoffs if we were to make them. Zukowski unable to win the ball back. Leonard Maloney the same. And Tyler Dean has to parry away at his near post for another Houston corner. Decent enough save. Pretty comfortable one though, to be honest. You'd be disappointed if the rookie goalkeeper allowed that one to get by him. Brandon Bay gets his head to it, but directs it straight back towards the Houston corner kick taker. And Rodriguez sets Rioni away. Brandon Bay on the overlapping run. That's a rash, reckless challenge. And it should be met with a booking, and it is. So one final opportunity to create a goal-scoring chance at the end of the first half here. Brioni. Can he find Leonard Maloney? No. Brioni's been a bit more of a target man today than ordinary. Really good high pressing. Oh, and that's a... A less than ideal challenge from Maloney. Leaving one on the goalkeeper. The referee, I don't think, even waved advantage there. Didn't even wave play on for Houston. So didn't see that as a foul somehow. As Houston looked to create the final opportunity of the first half. Dewan Jones has been caught very narrow. Allowing Houston the width to get a cross in. Thankfully, we do now have players back. One of whom is Zukowski. And one of whom forces the ball almost out of play. And the referee blows his half-time whistle with the scores level. Disappointed to concede, especially so quickly after we took the lead. And especially after the dominant start that we had in the game. But Houston certainly worked their way back into it and won all at half-time. Probably is a fair score. So no changes as we come back out for the second half here in Houston. I think if we perform... In the second half, as we did in the first, we're going to have a good chance of coming away with all three points in this game. Carlos Hill spots Thomas Chonkalai in space on the far side and picks him out well. Chonkalai cuts inside. That's what we expected Carlos Hill to do today, but that hasn't really panned out that way. How would that pass not be for Brandon Bay? Bay eventually finds the ball at his feet, crosses it in towards Rodriguez. Chonkalai beaten on the edge of the box to the header. But it does again fall to a New England Revolution man, Zukowski. That is an awful effort. That's closer to the corner flag than it is to the goal, I think. Really terrible. I mean, we didn't bring him in for his shooting, although he has had five shots in today's game. And he does have a bit of versatility, Zukowski, but he's not exactly a, a goal-scoring midfielder exactly. He does have some attacking talent. But I don't think we can rely on him for more than four. That's again to Brandon by Four or five goals per season. What does win the ball there though, Zukowski. Carlos Hill finally gets a shot away. Chonkalai drives it back across the face of goal. And it's blocked by Houston and out for a corner. Which Carlos Hill, the captain, again will deliver. Gonna look for Vrioni. Just on the edge of the six-yard box. Oh, and we almost found him. Zukowski just nods it wide to Carlos Hill to cross once more. Vrioni turns it towards goal. Can't quite find the rebound. Decent enough effort from Vrioni to turn his head a goalward. But blocked immediately because he was marked closely by the, the Houston defender. And Zukowski now has picked up an injury. We saw Rodriguez run his off earlier in the game. Hopefully Zukowski can do the same. Really good challenge from Kessler. And we will just retain possession through Dewan Jones. And then eventually Phil Neumann. Into the feet of Carlos Seal, who again has spotted Thomas Chonkalai on the far side. 
and again has laid it right into his into his path. Chunkalai again cuts inside. Not too much going on ahead of him, and he eventually just loses the ball. And Houston will look to counter attack down their right, our left. They've taken Dewan Jones out of the game at the very least. Kessler comes across to cover for his teammate, though. Very well worked from Houston. And Brandon By eventually heads clear. Nodded down by Rodriguez. Into the feet of Rioni. And Carles Hill just lifts it into the path of the onrushing Zukovsky. Who, with his sixth shot of the game, puts it straight at the goalkeeper, as does Frioni with the rebound. And it falls to Rodriguez anyway, who puts it into the back of the net the third time of asking. An absolute calamity at the back for Houston. And a calamity of finishing as well. First for Zukovsky. Again, not sure if his injury is hampering his mobility in any way. But his. We saw he, he'd had five shots already in the game. None were as clear an opportunity as that one. And he put it straight at the goalkeeper. Brioni did the same from the rebound. And the Houston defender just could not clear. Rodriguez thought all his Christmases had come at once because he found himself in the six-yard box with the ball at his feet. And a completely wide open net. And Zukovsky secures it surely. Two goals in as many minutes. Zukovsky finally gets his. And what a turnaround here in Houston an hour into the game. It was looking like it wasn't going to be our day. But a disastrous mistake at the back. And then Houston potentially lose their heads. And they lose their grip on the game. And all of a sudden we are 3-1 up. With an opportunity to make some changes and see this game out. So Houston kick off. With a goal. In their sights. We are going to do our best to prevent them from finding that target. Maloney. Into the path of Chunkalai. We are going to make a couple changes next time the ball goes out of play. And we are going to sit back in our ultra-defensive game plan for the remaining minutes here in Houston as well. So we're going to drop back into a 5-4-1 formation. Just to try and protect this lead. We don't need to push for an additional goal. A two-goal lead is more than enough to get it done. Especially with only 25 minutes left on the clock. Rodriguez wins the ball back high up the pitch and the referee blows his whistle. Do not agree with that at all. But Tomiak about to come on for Vrioni. Nick Lima about to come on for Brandon By as well. We will drop back into that 5-4-1 formation. So Tomiak going alongside Kessler and Neumann at the centre of that defence. Maloney remains in midfield alongside Zukovsky. And Rodriguez, now the lone striker up front. Really nice ball into the path of Chonkalai. There's Duan Jones in support as well. Is Chonkalai on side? If he is, he's going to be able to find Rodriguez in the box. The goalkeeper comes out. Zukovsky can't win it. Just over 20 minutes to go. Stoppage time not included. So a tall task for Houston to get back in this game from here I didn't check the Western Conference playoff picture ahead of this game I probably should have but I imagine Houston are very much in the running for one of those playoff places strike from range really good save Tyler Dean just had to make sure he got across his goal there and, and saw the ball onto his palms to make sure he parried it away to a safe area as well. Each of those things he managed to do. Thomas Chonkalai. Good run from Zukovsky into that channel. Chonkalai won't quite find it, but it is going to cause problems for Houston nonetheless and force a corner. Houston going to make a change or two as well as Hector Herrera, Hector Herrera comes on for Smith. 
Carlos Hill will deliver the corner. In search of Kessler, can't quite find him. Zukovsky can't quite win the header either. He's had a very good game today so far, Zukovsky. It's been a really good addition to the side, to be fair. So has Tomiak. He has really stepped in as, as Phil Neumann has dropped off in terms of form. Phil Neumann looked excellent at the start of the season. The last couple of episodes, he's really started to drop off and his, his level of play has, has dipped significantly. Thankfully, Boris Tomiak has come in and has hit the ground running in New England. Rodriguez hits the ground running here. And he may be into the box for a fourth. And it's another good save. Excellent save from the Houston goalkeeper. Just timed his run off his line perfectly. Just waited for Rodriguez to take that extra touch. And it wasn't a great touch, to be fair. Took the opportunity to come out off his line and sprawl at his feet. And Houston suddenly are back in it. Bassi with the goal this time. About 15 minutes left to go in the game. And suddenly the lead is just one goal rather than two. And that's just absolutely porous defensively. Kessler. And I think Neumann just stand there and look at each other each waiting for the other to make a tackle neither of them do Bassi walks through into the penalty area turns his shot towards goal where again Tyler Dean probably should be making a save maybe that's harsh maybe that's harsh it was tucked away into the corner but there wasn't a huge amount of pace on the shot and it was from about 14 yards so Tyler Dean perhaps perhaps warranting the criticism the same goes for the third Houston goal let's take another look at this one I mean there's nothing Tyler Dean can do about that one. He gets close to it, to be fair. I'm not putting that on Tyler Dean. I'm putting that entirely on the defense. And we completely turned around the game in two minutes. Houston have done the same. Two goals in as many minutes for them means it's three all once more. And again, at this rate, the points are going to be shared. So we will have to step back up into a more attacking game plan. And we will probably have to make another change or two like Houston are doing here. So it's going to be two more changes for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the New England Revolution. Zukovsky, very good game for him. He comes off to be replaced by Nacho Heel. And I'm sick of looking at Phil Neumann. He comes off to be replaced by Bobby Wood. So we go back to that 4-2-4 formation in which we started the game. Bobby Wood up front alongside Rodriguez. Maloney and Carles Heel now in centre midfield. And that's got to be cleared away at the back post. Really good block by Dewan Jones. And it's Nacho Heel now on the right hand side. Thomas Jonkalai still on the left and still finding himself in acres of space. Eases past his man. Finds Carles Heel. He finds his brother Nacho. Cuts it onto his left foot. Unlike Carles, it's the weaker of his two. And unfortunately, the shot goes harmlessly wide. So moving into the final moments of the game. All square here in Houston. Thomas Chonkalai looking to change that. He's been excellent today as well. Oh, and... The ball does work its way to Rodriguez, and that is a foul. So we're going to have a free kick in a dangerous position here with two minutes left on the clock. Carlos Hill to deliver with a bit of pace across the six-yard box. Rodriguez with the header and onto the roof of the net. Will that be the final opportunity of the game? For either side, could well be for us. You would imagine probably so. 
Leonard Maloney almost wins the ball back. Can't quite manage it though. Tomiak beaten, Kessler beaten, Dean beaten. And the comeback is complete. Houston from 3-1 down. Lead the game 4-3 as we are poised to enter injury time. Again, it's poor defending, and it's Tomiak this time. We just we just can't sort ourselves out of the back. I thought we'd done so with those additions of Tomiak and Zukovsky in the summer transfer window. But just as I was singing Tomiak's praises for stepping into the boots of Phil Neumann, he goes and lets the side down in a well and, and pretty much gives up what could be the most important goal of the series. Unless Bobby Wood has something to say about it. And he does not. Bobby Wood set to depart in a mere weeks as the season comes to a close. Set to join FC Cincinnati. And like he did in the last episode, he had a chance to leave a parting gift behind for the New England Revolution fans. Failed to do so. And Houston surely are just going to keep this ball for the remaining seconds of the game and wait for the referee's final whistle, which blows. And that scoreline blows from 3-1 up to 4-3 down in a matter of moments at least the two goals that brought Houston back level and then a last minute winner rounds it out for them really really harsh really really disappointing and who knows who knows what that does to our season from this point so with two games left to play we are absolutely clinging on to that final playoff place level on points now with montreal and in the playoffs by virtue of a single goal so needless to say the fate of our season could hang on this next game against dc united if we are going to keep our fate in our own hands we have to come away with a result will be a 4-2-3-1 formation phil neumann will not feature Neither will Tyler Dean. The young goalkeeper has been dropped in favour of Henrik Ravas after his last few performances has disappointed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to say the least. And despite Thomas Chonkalai opening the score in just 20 minutes into the game, we couldn't kick on from there. We couldn't even hang on to that single goal lead as Click did equalise for DC United 64 minutes in. So we are very much relying on Montreal to drop points, and I have already seen that they did draw with Charlotte FC. So we are going to be level on points with Montreal, heading into the final game of the season against Inter Miami. And as if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't know he was under enough pressure already, the board dropped by once more just to remind him that his position at the club is currently under close observation. So Inter Miami, of course, will finish the season as the number one seed on a massive 70 points. They did, of course, win the US Open Cup as well, 3-2 over Atlanta in the final. So beating them is going to be a tough task, but we do need to do that to make sure that we finish above Montreal. And even then, it could come down to the score lines. I did want to play the 4-2-3-1 formation for this one, but Zukovsky, unfortunately, is away on international duty. And I just don't trust anybody else to play alongside Maloney. Plus, at this stage, go big or go home. Let's go all out to win this game. So the 4-2-4 formation, strongest 11. Ravas keeps his place in goal. Tomiak keeps his place in the back line Nacho and Carlos Hill both feature we got off to an inauspicious start in this one we thought Luis Suarez the MLS top goal scorer was about to take the free kick he left it for his into Miami teammate who absolutely buried it in the top corner managed to get it up and down over the wall that failed to jump and already Miami were one nil up we didn't let our heads get down though we pressed to get back into the game Nacho Hill delivered across into the box that was met by Luciano Rodriguez's header. It was quite away from goal though and it was parried away fairly comfortably by the Miami goalkeeper. And Dos Santos made another save shortly after Leonard Maloney this time a driving run towards the edge of the Inter-Miami box. He unleashed with his right foot 
But again, the Miami goalkeeper more than equal to it. And we piled on the pressure. This time, Thomas Chunkalai firing from range again. The Inter Miami goalkeeper parrying away. This one a bit more of a difficult save. But eventually, we made the pressure tell with a really nice pass and move. Chunkalai lifting the ball up to Rodriguez, who just tapped it into the path of Carles heel. And he fired first time across the goalkeeper. A really good finish sneaking just inside the far post so with the score again level it looked as though we might be able to kick on and win this game we had a minor scare shortly after we equalized but the miami goal was ruled out for offside but any hope that we had of coming away with a win and securing that playoff place completely obliterated in the second half lionel messi got the party started for into miami with a goal just five minutes into the second period about an hour into the game miami had a third tomiak initially putting in some good defending but failing to clear luis suarez extended his goal tally for the season making sure that he would finish as mls top goal scorer ahead of giacomo Brioni with miami's fourth goal of the game and then messi grabbed his second just five minutes from time again it was poor play in the penalty area failing to clear the game was already gone by this point but this just added insult to injury so a disastrous way to finish the season because that means that montreal don't even need to have drawn to be able to gain that final playoff place we had a better goal difference than montreal heading into the game but if such a catastrophic scoreline if montreal could just avoid losing by as many goals as we did they could end up with a better goal difference than us and that could give them that final playoff place. But Montreal do manage to come away with a point, a draw against New York City FC. So they do secure that final playoff place, finishing one point ahead of us in seventh. And just like Caleb Porter before him, after just one season in charge, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is relieved of his duties as New England Revolution manager. So we haven't quite finished on the same high that we did in the last series, the realistic takeover rebuild with Everton, but we will be finishing the series here after just one season. But we will have time to squeeze in one final career mode series before FC25 releases in a few months time. This video will be going up on a Friday and the opening episode of that new series will be going up a week from today. So I hope to see you in that one. Take it easy.